And welcome back, dear friends and deep thinkers. Yeah, we're playing Pentiment and we want to make a mural. And this is us, Magdalene Druckerin tossing. A bibliophile, tinker haggling under polyglot. So, um. And we have, re uh, we have found out a lot about, um, about Tussing's past. Let's also see, um, maybe there's something still to do here. But maybe we could also... Uh, what the heck is this? Ah, oh, that's where we are currently. <laughs> okay, so Ave, yeah. So there's currently nothing much to do. We don't... No, we've talked to everyone and we will start the mural now. So let's see how we can do this. Um, apparently like this. Now we have to decide. It's going to be really, really interesting what we can even decide. Oh, hey, Mags, how's the mural coming along? It's, he's always following us. Always it's. Magdalene, can't you let it go? Max is so much easier. No, Otto Zimmermann, I can't. Oh, don't call me. Fine. Anyway, Magdalene, how is the mural going? It doesn't look like much yet. Um, yeah, we haven't started. <laughs> Uh, well, of course, it doesn't look like anything now. I only just finished priming the wall. Now I have to decide what to depict. It's hard to piece together the history of Tassing when it happened so long ago. Since the Abbey Library burned, I can only rely on stories from people around Tassing. Even what I found out, find out about the Romans and pagans was obscure. I had to go into the old salt mine to find anything. At least I know now now I know what to paint for the first part of the mural. So what is it? Uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean We could make the thing with our human sacrifices. <laughs> Oh, uh, we could use the pottery and tools. That's a tame one. Smokey told me a story about the god Mars as a wolf and the nymph Tasia. That's a sexual one. <laughs> Il Peter remembered the legend about a chieftain Ritus who held a wolf that led him to our spring. That's kind of a combination of the Persia and the Roman story. Oh, we could go for Pershta, the spirits, and the human sacrifices. It's all true. It's all true. Let's go as far back as we can. Uh, the Nymphtasia is actually, yeah, I think that the oldest one is Pershta. Il Peter will also like that. I'll recreate an image I found in the mine. It showed how our ancestors made human sacrifices to appease Persia and the spirits. Uh, human sacrifice? Don't you think that's a bit much? I don't know how the rest of the town will take it. Especially Father Thomas. So what made you choose this story anyway? Hmm. <laughs> I think it will make for the most beautiful artwork. Maybe so, but I think it will shock some people. Especially Father Thomas. Thanks for explaining it. Of course, I want you all to understand why I'm making these choices. Well, now that I've figured this portion of the mural out, I'd better start thinking about the next section. I'll leave you to it, Mags. Uh, Magdalene. Yeah, we don't... We want to go far back. Good night, Ertz. Good night, Magdalene, because our father would want it so. That's what we think, so we're doing it like that. The development of civilization. Now that I've decided how to depict Tassing's earliest history, I should decide how to paint Kiersau's history. Mother Illuminata's letter mentioned that a Monsieur Fortuny So used to be a brother in Kiersau. 
she said he knew a great deal about the abbey's history. I should write to him and ask him what he remembers. Oh, and I have Esther's letter to answer too. I should write to them both now before bed. Oh, before I write, I should read that old book Brigitta gave me. Maybe I'll learn something pertinent for the murals. Uh, let's let's look after father though first, and then we'll do all of that. Father's more important. Hey, Dad. Hello, Magdalene. All right, I'll leave you to sleep. Oh my goodness, we have to really have to do something. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. We could write. And where's the old book? The old book. The book. All right. Maybe, maybe we should first write. Him. All right. Where to begin? Right. The old book. It was the barons before Martin stole it, the Historia Tassier. When the Romans, having conquered the town, built up the walls around it, they established many temples there. This is harder to read than I thought. The book isn't in great shape either, since it's been sitting in a farmer's house for so long. Still, it matches the type of book binding I've seen from other German printers. It's not that old. Let's see. Oh, there's a section about the various dedications erected in town. That might be easier to read. Erigo simulacrum in agre, ut mars nostrum operem conspicat. I raise a vision in a field so that Mars may behold our work. Huh? Sedit Diana loco scaturing diosus ipsa. Wow, that's, that's really exotic words. Diana is the virgin Roman goddess of the hunt and the wilderness. Diana is also associated with fertility, the moon, and the underworld. Diana sat in a place with water oozing up from herself. What does that mean? It's a well. Oremus ut defendat opidum. They, they wanted to defend the, the fortress. Let us pray so that he or she may defend the town. Okay. None of this really makes sense. Maybe someone with better Latin than me could help me read it. The book is so big, though, it would be a lot of work. I could ask Sister Gertrude or Baltus for help. Werner, too, is much better at Latin than anyone else in town. Maybe even Father Thomas, even though Dad warned me not to bother him with secular books. Chances are slim they could help, but it might be worth asking about. I should finish writing my letters first. Mother Limonata told me that Matthieu knew some of the Abbey's early history. He is the Archdeacon of Sion now. I should write to him before the snow has come. Yeah, Sion is the capital of Valais when the canton joined the Swiss Confederacy following the Swabian War in 1499. Yeah, it's still a good, good city. I'll write to Esther too. Wow, we have so much to do. Writing, writing, writing. So much to write for a printer. Most revered Matthew, uh, Archdeacon of Sion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Magdalene Druckerin. I'm the daughter of Tussing's town printer Klaus. My father and I are creating a mural for Tussing's rat house. We want to show the history of the town and the abbey. Hmm. <laughs> Mother Illuminata told me that you might be the best person to ask about Kiersau's early history. Understand you're a busy man, but we would be most appreciative of any information you could give us. If you know of any other places where we might learn about the Abbey's history, we would appreciate it. Thank you for your help and consideration. Let's not remind him of the revolt. Thank you for your help, Magdalene. And we go on. Esther, our friend. Please forgive me for not writing sooner. So much has happened since I last wrote. Even as my last letter was en route to you, Dad was attacked in the workshop in the middle of the night. He survived, thank God, but his injuries are terrible. I worry about him. He's so dizzy he can't get out of bed. Some days his eyes become foggy and his memory fails him. 
Dr. Stoltz said that he's not going to recover, that it's only a matter of time before he succumbs to the injury. He's going to do the best he can to make things comfortable for Dad. I'm glad he's here to help. I've no idea who could have wanted to attack my father, or why. I found a note by him, too. All it said was, stop. It wasn't from the shop, because the script was written in the most elaborate hand I've ever seen. No one in Tussing has such skill in a script as far as I know, and anyway, I don't have the time to wonder about it. I've had my hands full running the workshop alone while tending to Dad. What's more, the town council intended to cancel the mural entirely. I had a hell of a time convincing them to let me paint it instead. They made a fuss about my being too young, not experienced enough, not strong enough to be on the scaffold. You know how it is. I suppose, no, I, I can't wait to leave this place. I want to go away. Maybe it's the coming of winter, but Tussing feels more and more cramped. I've had enough of everyone asking me about the mural and doubting my skill. Working on the mural has been a welcome distraction from the naysayers and my chores and worrying about Dad. Earth has been coming over under the pretense of helping me prepare my pains too. Mm -hmm. It's sweet, and I'm glad for the company. He makes the days easier. I'd like to have the whole mural finished by Christmas if I can. I just want to finish it in time for Dad to see it. It would mean so much to him. If Dr. Stoltz is right, I don't know how long I'll have. I hope you're faring better than we are here. All my love, Magda. Translation trouble. Yeah, we want to visit someone who can maybe translate the Historia Tassier. So let's do that. We're going to go to Baltus. The stars are blinking. Nice. Da, 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 da. Ah, it's still open, but Stoltz is locked up. It's always open. Oh, uh, hello, is Isenkopf? Ciao, Magdalene. Hey, where is Baltus? Where's Baltus? Have you seen Baltus? Uh, oh, he might be over at Dr. Stoltz, right? That might be it. I'll have to go around town and see who we can reach. Also look at all the plants. Dad always bought anise gra cakes from Grit to help soothe my stomach when I was ill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard about that. The Steinauer House. Church and Druckers. That's our house in the middle of our street. Oh, there's Father Thomas. Hello, Father Thomas. Can you spare a moment? Yes, of course, Magdalene. What is it? Well, I found this book, but I can't read the Latin very well. Could you help me translate it? The whole book? Oh, dear. I can't afford that much time away from my duties right now. The Christmas sermon is coming up, and I've already fallen behind on Advent preparations. Could the matter wait, perhaps? I'd be happy to do it over after the festivities. Of course, Father. Thank you, Magdalene. Now he knows we have the book. Will it disappear? So, we haven't found Baltus. Maybe... Maybe... I'm watching the violets. I try to try making an ink from their flowers sometime. Oh, nice, yeah. Watching the violets bloom, and here the old statue of St. Moritz has seen better days. Uh, let's see if we can ask. I can smell the anise on the breeze. 
Let's see if we can ask in the convent. Anyone in the shrine? No, there's the hand. Hand of St. Moritz. The poor Clares take care of it now that the Benedictines are gone. I mean, there should be something in the prioress house, right? Still. Oh, and in the convent aquarium, too. Should gather some mugwort to help break Dad's fever. Um, isn't that mugwort? And why can't we have it, then? It's... Why can we not kind of get it? No, let's ask the prioress. Right, um, maybe she can... Oh, no. She won't help us. Uh, we'll see about this sister Gertrude. Now I'm really afraid that someone might... Hmm. The Dr. Stoltz is locked up. This is right, it's curse, right? Baltus is away. We can only sleep. Father Thomas doesn't want to do it. Something will happen to that book. I have that. I have that in my guts. Maybe we can... Or maybe we can ask Watcher's Love in the forest. He knows quite a bit of Latin. And I think he might be kind of trustworthy. Hey, Apollo. Can't believe you would ruin our plan and tell Father Thomas, Magdalene. It's going to be hilarious, but you ruined it. Mm, yeah. Let's not go for him personally. Putting frogs in the Eucharist isn't funny. It risks the town's salvation. Oh, come on, Magdalene. You don't really believe that, do you? Ah, whatever. That's the last time we help you. Wow. They're taking this real seriously. I hope we can get... We didn't want to do it, right? But this is how it comes out sometimes. Sometimes you say a wrong word, right? And you have to live with that. Even if it's terrible. Great! They're all away. Where are you guys? Where is everyone? Everyone who could theoretically help is not here. Oh. I should gather some mugwort. You keep saying that, but why don't you pick some up? Nobody anywhere. Let's bet we can go to the to the um to the bowers. I bet we can. I bet we can. And this guy will come this night. Maybe Amalia can help us? Of course. She wouldn't know Latin much. She's asleep. She's asleep. Martin will not be able to help us. Ertz. Hey, Ertz. Hey, Mags. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't call me Mags. Gardner Farm. No. Locked out. The power farms. gonna be it's gonna be harsh now that's maybe you want to come over and protect me for the night oh goodness oh goodness 
need to go to sleep. It's late. I should get some rest soon. Yeah. Because there's no other choice. I would really like to have creaky hinges now. We're awake at night, will we? No. Hey, what's happening? So much time has passed. Stop, stop. We don't want the time to pass so quickly. Mistress Drukarin, a few more letters for you. Take care. Thank you, sir. Safe travels. First letter is from Reverend Mathieu. Mistress Druckerin, I was not acquainted with your family during my years at Kiersau. Even so, I remember your father was one of the townsfolk who prevented the peasantry from burning us alive. I am not overly inclined to assist the people of Tussing in their endeavours to catalogue the origins of the abbey they destroyed. Even so, it was a long time ago. In the interest of posterity and Christian charity, I will tell you what I recall. Some time after the Romans left, Christians settled in the region and built Kiersau Abbey, on the ruins of a fortress. The abbey was founded by a nobleman of the Kiersau family. She was both its patron and its first abbess. Perhaps two centuries ago, Kiersau changed to being run by an abbot. I do not know the reason, but many other double monasteries did likewise around the same time. It may have been done out of fear of being shut down, as double monasteries were frowned upon by the Pope. Sadly, that is the extent of my knowledge. Your neighbours put any other records about the abbeys, abbey to the torch. Sic arzit historia kirsis. So burns, yeah. The history of Kiersau. Even so, ah, look, his friend is also here. I have heard that the sisters of the poor Clares have formed a new chapter at the Abbey. I can only hope that their love of apostolic poverty has not driven them to impoverish the shrine of St. Moritz. Assuming they have not consigned the contents of Kiersau's former occupants to a bonfire, you may find something there. I hope this has been of some help to you and yours. May God keep and protect you. The most reverend Mathieu Fossosigny, Archdeacon of Sion. Nice. Ah, another reply from Esther. Oh, Magdalene, I'm terribly sorry to hear about your father. My parents sent their deepest condolences. If we can provide you anything from Prague, you only need send word. I know we're further away than it is easy to travel, but I will see. Uh, I will see that we can do what Hashem allows. Hashem, literally the name in Hebrew. This is a way to refer to God indirectly in informal conversational writing. All right, it's a bit of an iconoclasm. Father says that he remembers no one who would want to harm your father. Yet, the night I was born, he remembers great strife in town. Perhaps there's old blood over depicting the night of the revolt? That is all he could suggest. We pray for you and your father every day in our offerings. Hashem will make all things right in time. He will exact justice on the culprit. I'm encouraged to hear that the town council let you continue the mural at all. The guilds here would protect your right to complete a job, especially once a contract has been reached. You will like Prague much better than Tussing, I think. Truly, I cannot wait for you to visit. But I'm glad that you've found some joy in your work on the mural in the meantime. We are all well here. Elisha has been carving a new set of wood cuttings, and Father's agreed to a new contract at the university. I found Simon. His family didn't move far away after all. He's planning on working as a doctor in the city once the expulsion order ends. His parents have been meeting with mother and father quite often now, so I hope that I will be sending good news in my next letter. With Hashem's help, please inform us of your father's condition in your next letter. Be well, Esther. Such nice letters. 
That's all the letters I have for now. I should head home and check on Dad. Good morning, Magdalene, says Werner. I'm here right on time. I hope you are well. Well enough, how's my dad? That is what we are we were about to discuss. How are you feeling, Klaus? His fever broke at dawn this morning. That's good news, right? All things in time. I still feel weak. The dizziness has not receded. My head continues to spin whenever I try to sit or stand up for too long. Occasionally I am struck with sudden and severe headaches. Well, um, the damage runs deeper than I first thought. Let me be honest here with both of you. I am worried. The circumstances are not unfolding to your to our benefit. Klaus, your health is not mending. Perhaps it is due to your age. Perhaps we have passed numerous critical days with no change for the better. Meanwhile, the winter draws closer and I am running low on medical supplies. The roads into town likely snowed in, especially the paths. Supply shipments will not arrive for months. Have you asked Gertrude for help? I have. Truly, things must be really dire. They are not insignificant. It has been a difficult year. Even with the patrols in Bavaria, many merchants have been struck by bandits. French troops have periodically raided the western holdings of our empire. The fall of Estergom and Sekeshfer war to the Ottoman Turks. Many trade routes from the east have been cut. The pillage of Nice by Barbarossa's corsairs and our losses in Italy have also put us into a predicament in the south. Because as always, we suffer from the wars of others. What are we to do now? When a Klaus has to continue with rest and a healthy diet, I will see what more I can find in my library. I wish I already had a copy of Vesalius De Humani Corporis Fabrica. In the meantime, Klaus Magdalene, pray to God. I must take my leave. I will come again next week. Klaus, I thank you, Dr. Stoltz. I thank you as well. I am only doing what I meant to do for this town. Stay out of trouble, Magdalene. He worries too much. I'll be all right. Geraldine, do you want anything to eat before I leave for the day? I'm working on the next section of the mural today. I have to say I'm really a little bit growing paranoid, right? I mean, Stoltz has been a good one, but he's also treating our father, and our father is not getting better. Maybe there's a connection. But maybe not. It might just be that he's hurt so bad. Klaus, I'm not so hungry right now. I'll be all right. Your letter from the Archdeacon. Yes, that's right. What did you learn from him? Hmm. <laughs> he seemed sad over what happened during the revolt, hesitant to tell me anything. He did say the abbey was founded by a noble woman. After the moments left, everything else burned in the fire. Klaus, how unfortunate. I know the brothers kept careful records of the monastery so much lost in one night. Magdalene, the archdeacon did suggest the poor Clares might have held on to some of the records from the convent. I should be able to learn more about Tussing's Christian history there. Klaus, an excellent place to start, Magdalene. Sister Gertrude doesn't come out of the convent much, but I think it's worth asking her. Maybe Father Thomas knows something too. I should talk to him. Klaus, if I recall correctly, the miller's wife has a long family history in Tassing. She may know something of the local history that the others have forgotten. Magdalene Elsie, I thought she moved here when she married. She doesn't have any relatives in town. Klaus, not anymore. Age, illness and marriage took the rest of her family. But the Kavyesels used to live all up and down this valley. Go talk to her. I will thanks, Dad. Hmm. Maybe something remained in the Abbey's ruins. I should definitely see what's left. Klaus, Magdalene, you be careful. Those ruins are dangerous. I won't go far into them, Dad, just to take a look. Because, all right, where is Scarf to? It's getting cold out now. 
can feel it in my old bones. Evelyn, don't worry, Dad. I'll see you tonight, all right? Class. All right, good luck. Hmm. So much to do. Tassing's Christian history. Oh, he doesn't look good. Hello, Magdalene. Mm. Oh, <laughs> she's cooking for us now. Hey, Clara. Magdalene, dear. Hello, Clara. Thank you again for helping me look after the house. I can't tell how much more this, much, much more time this gives me to work on the mural. Oh, it's no trouble. You have your hands full as it is. Magdalene, I know Dad really enjoys the company while I'm working too. Clara, ah, yes, he sleeps most of the day, but he's been in good spirits whenever I drop in on him. You two keep a clean house too, well aside from the workshop, but I can't blame you for that. I've left that to you to take off. I don't want to damage any of our supplies. Magdalene, thank you, Clara, truly. You've been such a blessing to us both. Clara, oh, you're such a dear, Magdalene. God bless you. Yeah, let's go to sleep. No. <laughs> we'll not go to sleep. Do we have to clean that up? Oh, I'll clean it up later. The mural is more important. Yeah, and that's the artist's life, right? Is it? Murality! There's Father Thomas, but we also want to go to Balthazar. to come later yeah we don't have time to for small talk right now we want to go to Balthus where is good Balthus hey hello Balthus do we have a moment only one I'm afraid what can I do for you came across a book about the history of Tussing and I was hoping you could help me read it Oh, no, not today. I'm far too busy for that at the moment. And as you and I have our hands full preparing for the, the Christmas ale, you see. Really, of course. Sorry to bother you. Not at all. Apologies. I couldn't be of more help. Ah, that's you. Ciao, Magdalene. Ciao, Ignazio. Come stai? Come stai? How are you? Hello, Ignazio. How are you? Ah, I am well. The winter is approaching quickly, no? What is it you say here? Perchta pinching at your nose? <laughs> You've called on to our customs quickly. Yes, yes, Balthus is a good teacher. He's explained many of your funny Bavarian sayings to me. I must admit they are rather charming, even if the language is a bit rough to my tongue. Mean, will you be staying in Tassing long enough to learn more of our funny sayings? That's you. Ah, I should return to Genoa soon, but Baltos and I still have some business to conduct. He does take taken longer than I anticipated to complete. His accounts are complex. I may be forced to remain a few more weeks. Dio, who knows? It must be difficult for you to be so far from home so long. Baltos has made me most welcome, so I'm in no particular rush. I only wish to return to Genoa before any heavy snowfall, otherwise my journey will take twice as long. Magdalene, I'll let you get back to work then. Grazie, Magdalene. Until later. He doesn't look like he's working ever. That's what Baltas is doing. Ah, so no luck with the book here. Stoltz was the next option, and then we'll go to the closed cloister and then we'll go and then we have to go to father thomas well hello magdalene can i help you hello dr stoltz i have a book here and i can't read it very well i was wondering if you could help me translate it well um, if you bring it after christmas i might be able to help i have too much to do right now i can't spare that much time magdalene no i understand sorry magdalene until later 
Until then. Oh, Werner, oh, Werner, oh, Werner. Okay. Mm. Let's drop by the rat house. <laughs> it's all under there. That's nice. Is there... I hope there's not a note here. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. How about we have an update in town? Apollo, are you still screw of Magdalene? Yeah, okay, he's... Ah, I didn't want to click here. Uh, yeah, okay. You can still not pick the stuff for Dad. Hey, Grit. Bless you, Magdalene. Red is not deepest, but then not everyone can be deep all the time. Hey, Craft. Hey, Magdalene. Come to admire a well chiseled craftsman at his best. <laughs> oh, where? I can't see one. Craft. Ouch, I suppose I stepped into that one. Have you come to see the repairs I've been doing then? To tell the truth, it can't. It is, it's not going as well as I'd hoped. What seems to be the issue? Craft, I assumed I'd hit a snag either when it came to the stone or the tools or my lack of artistic skill, but it's more than that. It's like in my head I can't see the, it, the right way. Besides, my dad wants me to help out on the farm more. I want to be there, but Grandpa taught me everything about the craft. He really wanted me to succeed, and I do enjoy the work. It's as if I can talk to the stone, you know. Not literally, but I can see how lines of tension flow through the rock. I understand how to form one thing from the other, how to create, make something that lasts. Grandma even offered to sponsor an apprenticeship under a master stonemason. Dad will support me either way, but I still feel like I'm pulled both directions at once, you know. Agnes is offering craft a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, is that really what he needs, or will people compare him to his father? Maybe he shouldn't leave Tussing. Mm. Hmm. You'll have to figure out the answer yourself. I can't help you with this. I know, I know. Have you found answers to all the questions that annoyed you? No, not to all, Craft. Then how do you know what to do? I proceed and solve problems as they arise. Sounds annoying, Craft says. Christ, this is hard. I don't know what to do. Okay, um, take the apprenticeship. Better than staying in Tussing, right? He doesn't want to do that. I don't know. I like it here. And I have enough experience from Grandpa to keep going. Besides, if I'm gone, there will be no one to look after the town stone. The church foundation is in serious condition, and who's to say who? There won't be another flood, flood come spring. No, I think I should stay. I'll have to tell Grandma I've made up my mind soon. Well, thanks for listening to me, Magdalene. That's what friends are for, right? Mm, well, work beckons. Father Thomas asked me to reinforce the walls of the church. To be honest, I'd like to reuse stones from the ruins of the abbey, but Father Thomas forbids it, says it's unseemly. It's just quality stone going to waste. I don't get it. Mm, he's being meek, as he always is. Hmm, I don't understand Father Thomas sometimes. All right, stay well. Until later, Magdalene. Until then, Croft. Let's get into the house. We've already made some enemies, right? Uh, Agnes. Good morning, Magdalene. Mm, we'll have to rely on Ertz to be our friend. Da-da-da-da. Good morning, good morning. Well, let's 
get down here to the town commons. Hey, Rizzy. Good morning, Mistress Trigorin. Good morning, Endris. Morning, Magdalene. Oh, he should know that too, Magdalene. God bless you, Magdalene. God bless you, Magdalene, and you too. You have nothing, right? Morning, but you. Oh, so now God bless you, Magdalene. Need something? I mean, maybe I'm looking into the history of Tussing. I think some families have remembered more than others. Can you recall anything? Also, no, I don't think those stories would be much use to you anyway. It's all folk tales and pagan nonsense. No place for those things in a good Christian household. Oh, all right. Is that really what you think? Mm. It doesn't matter. It's too late now to do anything about it, right? True enough. I'm sorry, Magdalene. It's all right. Well, thanks anyway. See you later. Until then. Oh, it's too late, Artemis. Go away, Magdalene. Ötz. Hey, Magda. Black Till. Hello, Magdalene. There's Eva. Hello, Magda and Christina. Magda! We have to go to the middle too. Martin Bauer. Let's just have a look at them. Hey, Martin. Wow. Taking the toll, eh? Magdalene. Brigida. Hello, Magdalene. Can I go into the house? We'll go further. Uh, wait. We want to go the other way. The other way. The other way. Rather down here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Dritter. Hey, Magdalene. Hedy. Oh, hello, Magdalene. How's the mural coming? I hear you browbeat the council into letting you do it yourself. They didn't have a chance against me once I'd set my mind to it, Hedy. Ha, that's the spirit. It's good to see you standing strong against those stubborn bastards. Mm. Gold may have made man from dust, but I swear he left some of them with rocks for brains too. Did you know Jorg was a spy to check on my hinges? I've had ups about enough of their silly projects. That Zimmerman boy seems to have a good head on his shoulders though. Once you settle down with him, you'll have a good life ahead of you. I do like him. I think we could learn to love each other. Hey, you're a good-looking woman. Young woman Magdalene, it won't take much to win his heart. He's a good boy. You could do worse. Magdalene. Thanks, Hedy. I'll see you later. Until then. You could do worse indeed, Simon. Hey, Magdalene. How's your dad? Any signs of him getting better? Hmm. Yeah, well, it says he's not improving as he should, and with the winter drawing closer, we're worried. Some be merciful, Dr. Stoltz. God be merciful, Dr. Stoltz knows his craft. He'll figure something out. Hans sends his regards. The Bauer household is praying for a swift recovery. Magdalene, thank you, and Hans and Jutta as well. I will. Klaus has always been such a bedrock of tossing. I'd hate for him to die. It'd be, ah, oh, sorry. It's fine. I fear it as well. It's best not to ignore one's fears. You miss your father, your real one, I mean. So, do I miss him? Oh. Kind of. I don't remember Joseph all that much. Okay. He's become a, a haze of sorts, a faint echo of feeling, an occasional emotion. I was so young when he got killed. I said I had trouble understanding what had happened for a long time. I understand. My mom, she's like an empty hole in my life. I have nothing of her. 
Seven. Oh yeah, you you never even got to see her, right? Not even a memory, huh? Suppose you have yourself for comparison. God molded you after her. I can't imagine how she c could have been like stubborn and unruly, yeah? Hmm. But can I know if I'm actually like my mom? All I have are stories from people. So, and well, you read books, don't you? Stories are about things that are true. Sometimes. Not always. I mean, really? What's the point of books then? Oh, well, I can't read anyway. I don't need money. What do you want to learn? Don't have the time. Work on the farm never ends, especially with the taxes eating at us. Anyway, the winter draws closer, so I got a lot of preparations to take care of. I truly hope Klaus recovers soon. God look after you both, Magdalene. Until later, Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Hans. Hello, Magdalene. Hello, Hans. Uh, I hope your dad recovers quickly. He's a good man. Hmm. Thank you. I'll tell him you said that. Good. This town has seen too many terrible things, but we're, we've recovered before. Maybe, maybe the Lord will return to your dad to health too. I can't expect the Lord to do all the work. Perhaps there's something in one of my books. Hans, don't spend so much time with your heads in, in a book. You'll miss your dad's last days. Be glad to have this time with him, I say. Wish I had as much with Hailwick. Anyway, I, I should get back to it. Until later, Hans. Is Il Peter still alive? I mean, one has to ask that, right? Oh, here he goes. Magdalene? Hey, Jörg. Hello, Magdalene. And we're in the Gurtner house. And we have Veronica. Hello, Magdalene. They all doing good. It has the Gertner bedroom, really. We can go to their bedroom. I I wonder if this is a coincidence because Andreas was resting here, you know. Or if something important may happen still in the Gertner bedroom, who can say? Who can say? Let's ignore Father Thomas. But no one will help us, right? Not even him. We'll go to Father Thomas last. Uh, we wanted to go to the mill. For else. Into the miller house. Magdalene, dear, what brings you up the hill? That suggested I ask about your family for the mural. He said your sister used to tell him about your family history. Your family name was Kaviesel, wasn't it? Oh. Not a soul in town has asked me about my family in years. I was beginning to think my neighbors had forgotten us. I'm not surprised your father remembers the Kaviesels. He was sweet on my sister before he met your mother. I'm the last of us left now. Kaviesel doesn't sound like a local name. Why wouldn't it be? I am Bavarian. It is my name. So it is a Bavarian name. Really, no one else in town has a name like that. And shouldn't you be Kavieselin? I have always been called Kaviesel, as were my sisters and mother and her mother before her. My grandfather told me the Cabiesels have lived in this area for hundreds of years. Perhaps even a thousand, though it seems impossible to imagine a time so long ago. Uh, the the Cabiesels were pagans? Yes, the original Bavarian people. Here, even before the Romans, Elsa says. My grandfather said his grandfather told him the Cabiesels resettled the town after the Romans left built their new home right on the spot where they had been living when the Romans arrived. Really interesting. Doesn't that seem unlikely to you? 
Oh, who can say? But does a story need to be true? However true it may or may not be, doesn't matter, Magda. It matters that I believe it, that it connects me to my ancestors. When I think of the ancient Caviezels driven from their land only to find it again and become Christians, they feel nearer to me. You understand? Um, yeah, I think so. It's like when my dad tells me stories about courting my mom. Let's honor her, right? I don't remember her face, but when he tells me about her smile, I can almost recall it. As a, yes, it doesn't matter whether you really remember. When I sing my sister's favorite songs to Ulrike, I may not know all the words anymore, but that's all right. Just as I may not know exactly how the Caviezels resettled Tassing. She wants to know, I think. I think. I think she wants to know. What matters is that I feel close to her and them, even though they are so far from me now. That is what stories are for, Magda. Now go on, you've got a mural to complete. Thank you, Elsa. You've given me much to consider. God bless you, Magdalene, dear. And Anna? God bless you, Magdalene. Hello, Anna, how are you? Oh, keeping busy. There's always plenty to do around the house. How's the mural coming? Paul mentioned your progress is quite impressive. Um... Hmm. I'm making steady progress. I think it will be finished just before the new year. And I, oh, how wonderful. I'll have to bring Andreas and Ulrike by sometime to see your progress. We won't get into your way, of course. I'm sure they'd love to learn about the process. You're all more than welcome, but watch your step. There's plaster everywhere. I've just mixed a new batch to keep the wool moist. It's hard to maintain the right texture when it's so cold out. Yeah, it's terrible when you when you have cold weather and, and doing this. And oh, I can imagine. I had a similar problem when I helped my mother in the bakery. Rolling dough in winter was such trouble. We had to throw out so many batches that wouldn't rise. Your discipline is admirable, Magdalene. You know, I was a real rascal back in the day. Skipped on working with my parents more times than I can count. Magdalene, but you're so hard-working, Anna. I can't imagine you making trouble. It is funny to consider, isn't it? I was a thief and a scoundrel. It started with cakes from my mother's table, still hot from the oven. Soon it was silverware, mugs, trinkets I found around town. Ricka's little hat once even belonged to Andreas Mahler, your father's friend. I stole it from his head. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, stealing is against the commandments. That's the old hat. So my father would make me return everything I hadn't eaten already and marched me to church to pray. Father Thomas grew accustomed to seeing me more often than Sunday mornings. Magdalene, uh, what changed? And I grew out of the habit over time. I think I started to see why my parents had such a devotion to the Lord. Stealing was my way of acting out. But when the trouble started in town, I realized that my thieving wasn't doing any good. Not to mention, I saw what happened to Martin Bauer. I decided I'd rather honor my father and mother as God commands. It gives me grace with Andreas and Ulrike on the hard days and with the rest of the town too. Mm -hmm. I think everyone can learn from your example, Anna. And hopefully from my present one rather than my past. Haha. <laughs> well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure you have plenty of mural work to do. I'll see you later, Anna. God bless you, Magdalene. Look at that. He's <laughs> making sketches here. Nice. Ulrike, hello, Mag. And here we go. There's Andreas. Magdalene, Harry Paul, hello Magdalene, hey Susa, sweetie, nice, 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 da, 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 da. Yeah, 
let's go to the meadow from the meadow into the forest maybe oh, oh look at them hey carl that's so still so beautiful here martha one more moment martha all right take your time oh hello magdalene dad look who it is carl. good morning mistress drukerin I mean, hello martha carl how are you today martha. oh our usual walk around town november hasn't grown too cold yet Dr. Stoltz says Dad needs to keep using the leg or the pain will get worse, Carl. And I'm getting old. <laughs> Not so old you can sit around at home telling stories, eh? About the same age as my dad, aren't you? Carl, Carl Klaus has always been too stubborn to grow old. Shame what happened to him, Martha, as if you're not stubborn too. No arguments from me there, Magdalene. Yeah, uh, Peter? Is that really that Peter? I think he's dead, isn't he? Peter survives through sheer stubbornness. I thought that's what Werner and his ghastly tools were for. And leeches. Oh, God, the leeches. Where does he even find them around here, Magdalena? He's been getting into the Pliny again, Carl. Oh, they're horrible. Cold and wriggling, just like the doctor's fingers. The dad. Hey, hey. He's the kind of man I wish Anton would have grown up to be. Anton, really? Okay. Hmm. Ah, oh, Anton, my poor boy. It's all right, Dad. I'm sorry, Carl. It's not your fault, Magdalene, just a babe, then. I can't. It's my fault that he died. It's not, Dad. You know it's not. Carl, he shouldn't have been with me that night. He shouldn't have. I was a fool. What happened? I know I was there, but all I remember is the flames. What a fire it was, the whole abbey engulfed. I was bleeding. Anton tried to drag me out of the fight. Then that god forsaken Landsknecht stepped between us. I hope he burns in hell. I mean, I can't even imagine what that was like. Hmm. How old were you during the revolt, Martha? Seven or so. I didn't understand what was happening. Someone brought Dad home in the middle of the night. It was dark, confusing. There was screaming outside. Mum and a couple of the men who brought Dad in were trying to to catch up to to patch up the wound, but it wouldn't stop bleeding. She kept shouting, "Where's Anton? Where's Anton?" There was blood on the floor. God, you cried so much you threw up. We couldn't get you to stop. So I couldn't understand where Anton had gone. Dad tried to explain, but Martha, my dear, enough of that. I'm so sorry. How did you go on, Carl? Did I? I don't know. Some nights I think I'm there still. The abbey is always burning. My Helena passed not long after. I was left alone with Martha to care for. May the Lord bless and keep her, Carl, as he keeps your mother, Magdalene. I had to keep going for Martha, and somehow my daughter grew into a wonderful woman despite it all. I suppose that was all Helena's doing. Mother, Dad, if I'm any good, it's because of you. Thank you for telling me about the night, Carl, Martha. Time doesn't heal, Magdalene, but it does dull the ache. Martha, it's time we continued with the walk, Dad. Carl, yes, dear, I'm feeling much more alive now. Mother, be well, you two. Hmm. What is it in the, in the golden hell? Is there still anything there? It doesn't seem like. I love watching the violets bloom every year. They match the purple of the mountains. I'll try making an ink from them sometime. Yeah. Let's get in there. Who knows? Hey, Killian. 
Hi Max, sorry I can't talk for long right now. Hi Killian, what's keeping you so busy? Ah, you know it's almost December. Preparing for the festivities is a busy time and Dad can't do it all alone. He pretends to be strong, but I, I think some of it is an act. He's growing older and sadder. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't really know how, how to help him. He doesn't talk about her much anymore. I think he's ashamed. I'm not, though. She was still my mom. Hmm. You're right not to be ashamed. Thanks, that means a lot. Everyone does bad things sometimes, you know. And the monks were around, they told us all about God's forgiveness. Voislav talks about it a lot too. So that's what I try to do, forgive. You've got a kind heart, Killian. Yeah, maybe. I just do what I think is right. How's your mural coming along, anyway? One step at a time. Learning about the history of Tassing is a challenge. And at least you can read it in other languages. But if there's a history of tossing in one of these those books that no one here knows about? Hardly. I don't think this town has ever been important enough. Suppose so, Killian says. Oh, I'm sorry, Magdalena. I really have to get back to work. Magdalena, I'll be well. More, 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 more. Here is Nico. Hello, Magdalene. What brings you to my humble inn? Uh -huh. uh, can a place named the Golden Hand be considered humble? Humility lies in the soul, not in the name. But I assume you didn't come by to exchange aphorisms. I'm on my way to Abbey. I thought it'd be helpful to explore the ruins for the mural, Nico. Ah, Kieso. It was an impressive sight in its day. A shame you never got to see it. Lots of history to be uncovered there, no doubt. You mind yourself in that place. Could collapse any day now. Magdalene, ah. Don't worry, Nico. I'll be careful. Nico, I, I imagine it will be like an adventure for one of these fairy stories. From scrabbling over rubble, uncovering trinkets and mysteries. You remind me of Johan in that. She was headstrong, fierce when she needed to be. The mural is coming along fine otherwise. Um, the more I learn, the better it gets. Good, good. Can't say I understand much about art, but we all appreciate the work you're doing. What with your dads? Well, I won't keep you from your adventure then. Besides, I have the inn to clean, Magdalena. Do, have, do you have someone to help you? Oh, I don't want to take up your time. Killian will lend a hand. Johanna was good at keeping me straight. She she kept this place spotless. Sorry. If you don't mind me asking, how did you two meet? Oh, memories. We were so young in Passau. It's to the east. I first saw Hannah during laundry beside the river just south at the Niedenburg Abbey. The way the sun hit her face of the water, she sparkled. And get her out of my mind. What do you love most about her back then, Nico? Um, it was the way she walked. She struck such a balance between determination and grace. How did you come to talk to her? Good luck and providence. You see, no one could tell me who she was at first. When she appeared at my family's warehouse, we were in the salt trade then. I didn't continue. She was a wit in conversation too, with a bold temperament that shone through every so often. We caught it, I spoke to her father, a happy day. You miss her a lot? I do. We didn't have a plan when we married. That we settled in Tussing was happenstance. When Killian was old enough to travel, we happened to pass through our way to Zurich. Mm. Why not stay in Passau? Salt trade was struggling, and there was trouble brewing to the east and south. The Lithuanians had started warring with the Muscovites, uh, former Russians, uh, the predecessors of the Russians. There were rumors of peasant uprisings. It wasn't unusual at the time, was it? 
No, but it felt more like threatening at the time, too close. Besides, we were going to Zurich for trade. We hadn't decided to leave Passau yet. As there was time to spare, we visited Kirsau and, of course, the shrine of the Hand of St. Moritz. Her eyes lit up. She said God had blessed us with an opportunity. The town had no inn then. We proposed the Landhaus to the abbot, and he gladly accepted. Magdalene, so the inn was Hannah's idea? I couldn't know, did I say that? It was a shared dream. Hannah and I were happy. So happy. And then Hannah leaped into the arms of the fucking Miller. I didn't know what to do. We had Killian to look after in the Landhaus. I loved her, so I let it happen. Then Otto died. And Andreas fucking Marler couldn't help but get himself involved. I never did sit, set things straight with her. Maybe I could have saved her, saved us. I'd only had the courage. I mean, that's not something anyone can know but God. He could perhaps... I'll ask him when the time comes. Can't be that far off now. He thinks he's dying, but I've kept you too long with my talking. You have the Abbey to explore, after all. It was good talking, Nico. Thank you for sharing Johanna's story with me. Nico, you did me the favor, Magdalene. I won't forget it. Until later. Until then. There's nothing here, apparently. Okay. Go down then. And uh, in that direction, there's also something. Do they have a guest? Oh, indeed, they have even two guests. This guy, Alexander. Ah, hello, are you one of the burgers? My man and I are in need of refreshments. There are two burgers, uh, Nico and Killian, I'm neither of them. Or you could be in an elaborate disguise, uh, truly. Anything is possible, Magdalene says. Exactly, Alexander says. The improbable is not the impossible. And through such incredulity may the accomplished deceiver succeed. I'm Magdalene Druckerin. Alexander, ah, from the print shop we passed on the way into town. Yes, I'm running it for my father while he's recovering from an injury. Alexander, terribly sorry to hear that. I hope he has a swift recovery. Thank you. Alexander, not much business for a print shop at this time of year, is there? No, for a land house. It looks like the trouble has all dried up. Darlene, it... how did you wind up here? You don't look like a merchant. Alexander, ah, huh, no, I should think not. No, this was just a step on my way back to Würzburg from Padua. I'm Alexander. This is my partner, Casimir. We're musicians by trade, travelers by necessity. We just purchased a new instrument for Casimir in Padua. Their luthiers are extraordinary. We are heading back to Würzburg for the Christmas celebration. Quite an important competition there for the Meister Singers, the Master Singers. The weather turned rotten so quickly. The rain has been awful, and the roads through the passes have all been mud. I don't know if we'll be able to make it to the competition now. If the passes do close before we are able to move on, will they open up soon? Mm, it's Bavaria, after all, in that time, when it was much colder than today. I'm afraid not. Once the pass is snowed in, you are going to be waiting a while, Alexander. I was afraid you would say that. I suppose I should plan for us to stay here through the winter. Sorry, Kaz. He's noting something down. It's all right. Oh, he doesn't speak, you see. I do the talking for the both of us. He can write on his tablet when the need arises. The people here like music. Uh, if, yeah, of course. Excellent. Excellent. Then we will endeavor to entertain you and your neighbors with our songs. I look forward to hearing it. We say to Alexander, thank you until then. Can we talk to Casimirs? He can write. So well. What does he all write? 
can talk. I'm sorry. Yeah. What is it? Don't be, it's fine. I'm Kazimir's musician with Alexander. I'm actually in Drukrin. I live here in town. Uh, are you are you are you Polish? Yes, from Kalish. Oh nice. What are you two doing in Tussing? Ask Alexander, sorry. All right, I won't take up any more, more of your time. And what does he say to that? Or right, rather? Thanks. God bless you. Indeed. And God, or whomever you want, bless you, dear friends and deep thinkers. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming when we go probably to the Abbey and to the forest, of course. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Khan signing out. See you soon.